The MCU is expanding. Over the last few years, we've seen the universe grow in every single direction. New characters, locations, and most importantly, new corners of the universe have been introduced. It's no longer restricted to Earth and space-based stories, as Phases 4 and 5 have made it a priority to have the MCU branch off into different levels of storytelling. Whether that's street level, global, cosmic, even multiversal, there are several overarching stories being told that don't relate to others, and I think that's a great idea. It makes the universe more like the comics with a lot more going on to make the world feel more alive, and it gets new characters involved. But there's one corner of the MCU that I think deserves more attention, and that's the supernatural. So far, it's been the least explored area of the universe, but I think that the supernatural side of the MCU is the one that has the most potential. The world the world of magic and monsters is one with a rich depth that deserves to be fully explored. Sure, there have been some projects that open that corner of the universe up, namely Doctor Strange, Werewolf by Night, and Moon Knight, but they've only scratched the surface on what this could offer. Spooky stories are some of the best in Marvel's library, and I think it's time that they embrace the mystical. Marvel needs the Midnight Suns. Or is it S-U-N-S Suns now? I don't know, but Marvel needs a hit of the supernatural. But here's the thing. For as often as the team gets brought up, the Midnight Suns are a group that haven't had a consistent presence in the comics. They come and go when needed and aren't around all the time like the X-Men or the Fantastic Four. But despite all that, they're a group that has such an aura to them that people have been begging for the group to make their live-action debut sooner rather than later, myself included. I think that the team is one of the most interesting in all of comics because of how unpredictable they are. Each version is different from the last with a new mission and new members. It keeps things fresh and creates a lot of varied stories. But if there's one consistency, it's that the team is constantly dancing around in the horror genre. If there's one genre that the MCU hasn't touched on enough, it's horror. They've never fully committed to a film being non-stop terror and have always strayed away from it. We've gotten horror sequences in movies like Multiverse of Madness or short presentations like Werewolf by Night, but there's never been a movie that was full of fright from start to finish. I think it's long overdue that the MCU explores this genre and doesn't hold back. With upcoming movies like Blade and Deadpool 3, they've shown that they're willing to give the R rating when necessary, so why not do the same for Midnight Suns? I get that Marvel is a family-friendly brand, but also, you know what? F*** them, kids. The franchise needs to grow and continue and welcome new ideas if it wants to continue to succeed. And if that means making children cry, then I encourage it. Since Disney is getting more comfortable with allowing them more freedom like this, Midnight Suns would make sense to be a project that fully embraces horror. Not half-baked sequences, I'm talking about an entire movie filled with non-stop terror. Whether it's jump scares, disturbing imagery, or gore, it's about time we saw a darker side of the MCU. Along with horror, the MCU is in need of some more mature storytelling. I love the fun comedy vibes that they usually go for more than most people, but I want variety in my comic book movies. These projects need to be able to tell complex and mature stories that dive into a much darker tone. So it makes superheroes so interesting because you can slot them into any environment and find a compelling story to tell. With a project like Midnight Suns, you can scratch that itch fans have for a more mature story and lean into the dark and spooky vibes of the project. These are characters with troubled pasts and dark histories, broken people with some real emotional baggage that could be explored. Having them come together allows for a cathartic team of that can do wonders for their character arcs. Most importantly, it'll also highlight characters who deserve more screen time. A recent rumor regarding a Midnight Suns project said that Marvel doesn't want to use any character who's already been on the Avengers. I think that's a great idea and allows us to explore the new heroes recently introduced and see some unique dynamics at play. Now, if you've gotten this far, you're probably wondering who would be on the team, and good question, but also, I was just getting that. Please be patient. When it comes to the MCU's Midnight Suns, I think it's best to work with characters already introduced in the universe and unite them under one common goal. Since this would ideally be a horror movie, I also think it would be fun to lean into those vibes and fill the team with as many monsters as possible. Starting off with our first member, he's one of the most popular Marvel characters who fans have been constantly asking to see more of. It's none other than Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. No, 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 no. There seems to have been a mistake. He does not get to be in here just because he was on the team in the comics. Go back to Sony hell where you belong. Who I was trying to say is Wong, the current Sorcerer Supreme and everyone's favorite Sopranos fan. He's a history of leading the team before in the comics, so it makes sense for him to take the spot in the MCU's version. Doctor Strange may be an ideal candidate, but I think it's more interesting if he's off busy trying to hold the multiverse together. This way, we finally get to see Wong step up as his own character. It's been a lot of fun seeing him show up in Shang-Chi and She-Hulk, but I want to see Wong as a leading man. He's a character who is long overdue for some depth, and I think this is the place to do it. It could be an interesting arc for him to deal with the responsibility of being Sorcerer Supreme, as especially all alone without Strange's help, as he potentially makes a mistake that creates the need for the Midnight Suns in the first place. It puts him in a position to feel guilt for this terrible thing he's unleashed on the world, and doing all that he can with the connections that he has to make things right. Wong has always been a funny side character, but I think that it's time we learn more about him than just knowing that he's a Beyonce fan. I want to see how he handles situations when he's the one in charge and giving orders. Up next is who I think should be the lead of the movie, and that's the Daywalker himself, Blade. 
Now, obviously, I haven't seen Blade yet, and if you have, what are you doing here from the future? Why are you talking to me and not stopping 9-11 or something? I have no clue how that movie is going to leave him off, but he's such a cornerstone of Marvel's supernatural world, and played by one of the most talented working actors today in Mahershala Ali, so it only makes sense to include him here. Using this movie as almost a spiritual successor to the Blade film, he could lead it and add a lot of credibility to someone who's already knee-deep in the monster hunting game. Plus, as a vampire himself, he really leans into the theme of monsters making up this roster. I think it would be an interesting arc for Blade to be dealing with some kind of bloodlust and having a hard time controlling it around the team. It would make him feel threatening and add a lot of tension to scenes, while also humanizing him as he overcomes it by the end of the movie. The next member of the team is my personal favorite, that being the Fist of Konshu himself, Moon Knight. A mentally ill, undead mummy with several different altars in his head just fits the vibes so well. There's no way that the MCU is doing the Midnight Suns without him. While he doesn't have as prominent of a role on the team in the comics as you think, the MCU's version is perfectly set up to be on this team. He's more of a supernatural character already as he's fought monsters and dealt with Egyptian magic, so he's well suited for this world. While season 1 ended with Mark and Steven renouncing Khonshu, Jake was still very much working with him, so I think there are two paths to get him on the team. Either Mark and Steven have decided to keep protecting the Travelers of the Night and are a more grounded Moon Knight who is willing to help join the team, or this movie is entirely from Jake's perspective as he's operating as the Moon Knight in secret. I think that is the best solution, as it not only fleshes out Jake's character, but it's the easiest way to get him involved with these characters when he's already active. Simply make the problem take place at night or bother Kanchu, and Moon Knight would be there on the scene trying to stop it, easy as that. He's also clearly someone who has trouble working with a team, so I think that should be his arc here. Oscar Isaac has even spoken about many times wanting to do a Midnight Suns project, as he thinks exploring Moon Knight trying to work with a team is an interesting arc for the character, and I completely agree with that. Traditionally, Moon Knight has always been a solo act. He's had some sidekicks and help here and there, but he's always wanted to do things alone and we can see that is clear with the MCU's version. Diving into this part of his character and forcing him to work with other people could be an integral part of his character as he learns these skills and is able to finally work alongside others. It'll help set him up for the future as a potential member of the West Coast Avengers or whatever team he ends up on when we see him next. It can help Jake open up more and show that he isn't this ruthless killer because that stereotype is very bad for people with DID and reinforces that he's just a protector trying to do the right thing. I also think it'd be really funny if he had a rivalry with someone else on this team, but we'll get to that later. Someone else I'd like to see on the team alongside him is the Scarlet Scarab, Leila El Fayouli. As the best original Marvel character and the successful archaeologist, I think that she would be an interesting point of view character for the movie. I know I said that I wanted the members to be all monsters, but I think having one regular person is a good idea to help establish things. Also, this is my video, so back off. Leila is someone who's been barely doing this hero thing, so thrusting her into the deep end could make for an exciting story. She's only just getting the hang of being a small-scale grounded hero, and despite her limited interactions with the supernatural, she could be having a hard time dealing with it. It can be your arc throughout the film to adjust and embrace this new life style. With Jake as Moon Knight in this as well, it'll also be interesting to see how their dynamic works together. Her and Mark's relationship is only just starting to be repaired, while she and Steven had been growing closer together. To see how her character interacts with Jake would add a new layer to both of them as she remains the link between all three altars. It also helped to have her around to explain things when necessary. With so many characters who know what they're doing all the time, it's important to have someone who can ask questions and help explain things to the audience. It's a necessary screenwriting tactic that helps reveal new information when necessary and can even help build twists. Another character who is perfectly suited for this team is Jack Russell, better known as the Werewolf by Night. Quick side note, can I just say how funny Jack Russell is as a name? I love when characters have names that are so on the nose, it's so funny. That'd be like if Batman was named Barb Estella. it's amazing. But to get back on him, he's a necessary member of the team. Werewolf by Night was Marvel's biggest leap into the world of the supernatural, so it's a no-brainer to include him in this. He should be one of those prominent characters in the movie since he has the most experience. He's been a werewolf for hundreds of years and has presumably seen and done some crazy shit in his life. The special presentation showed he's a character afraid of who he becomes when a werewolf, so I think it's a good idea to lean into that here. Show how desperate Jack is to do some good with the wolf inside of him. He's been cursed with this monstrous form and he has only ever done harm with it, so have him join the team in an attempt to help people and right some wrongs. He also should just absolutely hate Moon Knight. I want them to have the most petty rivalry. Insinuate that it's been on site with them for years and force them to work together as a team. It would not only add some comedic elements to a pretty serious team, but they can grow into genuine partners by the end as they put their differences aside. And where Jack goes, Ted is sure to follow, so he might as well have the man thing on the team. He would slot in well as the powerhouse of the group, burning all who fear it as touch. While he mostly acted as comic relief in the special as a silly man being thing, Ted is a really fascinating character who deserves more time to shine. After his tragic origin turned him into a monster, he began to lose more and more of the human part of his brain. He becomes more of a force of nature than a man. It's sad for him, but destiny is the swamp that transformed him was also the gateway to the nexus of all realities, which he becomes the guardian of. That is the aspect of the character I want to explore in this, and see him step up as one of those important figures in the multiverse saga. Perhaps he could help the team get where they need to be as he aids in their journey. 
We can't forget to include the final member of the Werewolf by Night trio, so let's include Elsa Bloodstone as the last member of the team. While she also may not be a monster, I think an interesting twist would be to have her genuinely feel like a monster for all the horrible things she's had to do in life. She was raised to be a murderer, destroying all supernatural threats just for the love of the game. The people on the team should fear her and what she represents, not trusting her after all of their friends she's killed. To them, she should be the monster for hurting them just for existing. While we the audience know that she's gone straight as shown in Werewolf by Night, her arc in the movie should be about proving that to them as she gains their trust. She's a badass fighter capable of stopping some of those powerful monsters out there, so show why she would be such an asset to the team. They may not like her, but they should need her for all of her expertise. It would be a great way to show how important this mission is when they're desperate for someone who they can barely trust to help them defeat these supernatural forces. I've been mentioning all these vague threats throughout, so now's the time I should probably explain the story I think they should be adapting, which is Damnation. It's a severely underrated comic event that was supposed to be a relaunch for the team, but Marvel Comics are bozos and didn't move forward with it for some reason after it ended. Regardless, I think this is a good story for bringing together the Midnight Suns since the comic did just that, and puts them against a powerful villain that MCU fans have yearned for for years, being Mephisto. There have been rumors of him appearing in the Ironheart series, so I think an interesting follow-up on that would be him unleashing Hell on Earth due to a mistake that Wong made, allowing him to seize power. Mephisto could take control of Las Vegas and make it a small pocket of his realm, torturing those in the city and stealing their souls. It would be up to Wong and his Midnight Suns to stop Mephisto from corrupting more of the innocent and expanding his empire of sin. I also think this would be a great place to introduce one of the coolest characters Marvel has to offer into the MCU properly, and that's the Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider. He's already been confirmed to exist in the MCU after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. briefly showed him, and I will die on the hill that that show is canon, so this is how you reintroduce him in a big way. He plays a huge role in the comic as he's always going to be linked to Mephisto after making a deal with him, so I think it would be smart to have him here as a sort of MacGuffin. Have Mephisto take his power back and trap Johnny in Hell. If they're able to rescue him, they can successfully overthrow Mephisto and put Ghost Rider on the throne as the new King of Hell. It keeps the spirit, pun intended, intended of the comic alive while changing things to better fit the MCU, and a thing I think would genuinely go hard. Who wouldn't want to see Marvel's coolest characters fight their way through hell? Does that not sound incredible to you? As for who should direct this project, I don't think there's any other choice than Michael Giacchino. Despite Werewolf by Night being the only thing he's ever directed, he proved that he's able to balance style, storytelling, and action in a way that is immensely satisfying. With his creativity, we could get some really great shots in here that emphasize all the practical effects of the horror genre. I would also love it if they kept that same old Universal Monster Movie vibes alive here to really help this corner of the universe stand out. He has what it takes to make a stylish movie with all the violence you could ask for, and knows how to ground these characters in emotion. I am just begging them to sign him on for this project already. It would change lives. The Midnight Suns are the most underrated and misunderstood comic book team by far. There's a whole world of potential for them, but nobody seems to understand what they're best at or even who's on the team. And no, the Punisher is not on the spooky team, people. Don't let this comic that never happened fool you. As the MCU continues to grow, there's an exciting opportunity to expand the supernatural side of it as well by bringing together these characters and giving them some time to shine. Embracing the chaos of the horror genre with a project that expands the tone and variety of the MCU is the direction that they should be heading to keep things fresh. The time for the Midnight Suns is dawning on the MCU, and it would be a mistake to pass on a group with so much to offer. Thank you all for watching. Your time is precious, so I appreciate you spending it here with me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about my thoughts about this spooky squad in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. If you don't do it, then I'm going to put the curse of Ra on you.